you finally decided what breed of dogs you will own, what you will purchase. Right away you're thinking of importing? Pump the brakes! Watch this video first before thinking of importing. Roll the intro. I know, I know, you got money, you got tons of money, but before you even think of importing dogs, let me offer you some tips or, or pointers before diving in into importing dogs. But why the need to import dogs? For many years now, all over the world, people have imported dogs because of this simple reason. Their country lacks the resources for more quality of dogs of their chosen breed. That's why they see the need to import dogs from overseas, all right? That's the simplest explanation on why the need for importing. Now, the second question would be what to do before importing? Study the breed. Study the breed of your choice. If you have watched my uh, a previous video of mine, I emphasize on studying the breed. So before you import a certain dog, study the breed. Know its standards. Give, knowing its standards gives you an idea on what quality and what is not quality. So it's a must that you study the breed. Take time to go to the shows. Find shows that showcase, find shows that showcases your breed of choice. Check out the winning dogs. What are their strengths? Check out the losing dogs. What are their, their weaknesses? Study the breed. Equip yourselves with enough information before importing. Because like I said, importing has a real purpose. All right? Here in the Philippines, well, in our language we say makapag import lamang what does that mean it means for just for the sake of importing they're gonna buy a dog from outside the country without checking out the quality without checking out the breeder without checking out everything about the dog so makapag import lang and that's a wrong mentality not having an import doesn't give you the key to the kingdom. Having an import doesn't give you the best dog right away. Yes, it somehow, it is somehow nice to hear or to listen to that word, I got an import, but it doesn't give you the key to the kingdom. All right? It doesn't give you the key to success. All right, there are a lot of things to consider before importing. Be a social media nerd. Nerd. Be a nerd. Study. All right? Compare. Browse Facebook, Instagram. Visit the accounts of top breeders, successful breeders, popular breeders. Know why they're popular. Know the reason why they're successful. Know the reason why they keep on selling quality dogs. They keep producing quality dogs. Don't dive right in, all right? Be a nerd for this breed of your choice. Go to the YouTube channels of kennels, of breeders. They showcase their dogs. 
They showcase their top dogs, their puppies, and everything. Compare. There are tons of videos in YouTube, Facebook, and, social, and every social media platform. Study. Study, compare, compare, compare. Browse, browse, and browse. All right? My third pointer would be explore the domestic landscape. What do I mean by that? Check out local produce. Check out local dogs. That's why I keep telling you go to the show. Do we have enough here in the country or in your own country, wherever that is, do you have enough resources? Do you really need to import dogs? Is importing dogs your only way in the breed community? Answers those, answer those questions first before diving in. Check out kennels, visit them in your country. I'm telling you, you're already planning to invest. Why not invest first on knowledge? Invest first on gaining friends who have the same uh, interest as you do. Don't rush. Don't be in a hurry. There are millions of dogs in the world. Every week, every month, there's a top dog emerging. All right? When you import a dog, it won't mean the end of every other competitor, all right? It doesn't even guarantee that you've got the best dog, all right? Pump the brakes, my people. Another point I would like to emphasize is, you know, it matters. It matters if this is your first second or third or fourth and so on and so forth it matters if this is your first time if this is your first time owning this breed don't you see the need to maybe try local dogs first local produce first so that so that you can get the hang of it so that you can familiarize yourself your environment to that new. It took me six years in inside the bully world before I even started importing dogs. All right, but uh, let me just share. This is a side note, but still um, important to the topic. But my first um, import was Rico. It came from the late Holiday May. Rest in peace, brother. Holiday May is one of the pioneers of this breed. And you know what's more commendable about that person? He gave me a chance of owning a puppy, shipping the puppy here without full payment. I'm not saying people will do that. That's why I'm even commending him. And God bless his soul. I'm sharing you this experience of mine. I didn't ask for him to do that. He did it. I mean, what did I expect? I expected full cash payment and full payment of the shipping fee before shipping the dog. But for some reason or another, he shipped the dog with a full payment. And I was so thankful. We became friends. We became close friends. He, keep, he keeps on calling me, talking about other stuff other than dogs personal stuff and everything and then all of a sudden i knew about his death and i got so sad about it and um yeah that was my sad story but it's actually a happy story of my experience i've never met him but my experience with the late holiday man one very important point i need to emphasize on is know the importing regulations of your country, of your respective country. 
I know for a fact, two of the most strict country in the world is actually part of USA is Guam, Hawaii, and Australia. For some reason, I think they have no rabies situation in their country. So if there is zero rabies situation in one country, then it will take you forever before you're gonna ship your dogs there. So these are for the sellers or even for the importers. If you live in Guam or in Hawaii or in Australia, it would take I think 30 to 60 days, sometimes longer, before a dog can be successfully shipped and landed to your country. So know every country's peculiar situation on importing regulations, all right? Here in the Philippines, we're lucky because uh, we're not too strict about it. Although I'm not saying we're too lenient, we have, I, I should say, on the average level, on being strict, we require a lot of things also, but it's not that hard, right? For the Philippines, what we only need to send is, of course, the payment, but for the importing regulations, what we own, what document we only need to send to the sellers, to the breeders overseas, is an import permit, all right? For Filipinos wanting to import dogs, all you need to send is the payment and the importing permit, all right? The Bureau of Animal Industry here in the Philippines has a website or has, uh, uh, yeah, has a website and you do the request of import permit online. You need to have an account on BAHI or Bureau of Animal Industry, all right? Um, I will put a link down below on that website so that you can start making a, an account. Or you can visit their office in Quezon City. It's along the Quezon City Circle. Look for their office and then you can actually ask them in person what are the regulations but good news for Filipinos we only need to send our payment to uh, our payment and the import permit it's actually a fast process we we apply for an import permit maybe for example today we may get it tomorrow there's not a lot of uh, applications all right one thing we need to know is the shipping process. Do you need a nanny? What do I mean by nanny? A nanny is like a person to accompany your dog from, let's say, Europe to the Philippines or to your country. There are countries that re would require that. There are countries that doesn't need that, all right? Uh, here in the Philippines, we don't need nanny to ship our dogs, right? But that's one very important matter that you should know, depending on your country's regulation. Second, can it be accepted? Your breed can be can can your breed be accepted on these certain airlines? Remember, it's becoming harder and harder to ship dogs because, especially for dogs with shorter snout. We all know that. Even here in the Philippines, domestically, we can, we can no longer ship them through the airline. That's why the business of shipping and transporting is thriving right now here in the Philippines through barco, through ships, all right? And that's not bad at all. Every, every person Earning a living, have that right to earn more, all right? Earning for a living, have that right to earn more, all right? So, again, know if it requires nanny. If it doesn't require a nanny, would airlines going to your country uh, block the entry or the shipment of your uh, breed of choice? Um, 
Is there an option for service dogs? They would sit beside you because they are actually service dogs. So there are a lot of um, possible ways to ship dogs. But again, before importing dogs, know these processes. Because mind you, if you know nothing about these intricacies of importing dogs, you're bound for a big headache. Because once you send your money, all you're thinking is, I need the dog that I paid for. But then again, you didn't study the importing process, the importing regulations of your country, and that's your fault. In the Philippines, we have this so-called quote-unquote broker. They call them broker. But I actually think that's a misnomer. Or I don't know. But they're not brokering anything. These people are the ones assisting would-be importers to process everything from applying for the import permit, from talking directly to the sellers, from retrieving and claiming the dog in the airport. So the importer, for example me, I bought a dog from the United States of America, and if I hire a broker, all I need to do is send my payment to America, talk to a broker, and then wait for the shipping. Once I arrive at the airport terminal, all I need to do is claim my dog. So that's a positive here in the Philippines. I hope this situation also happens to other countries because this is a, it's a paid service, of course, but uh, you avoid the hassle because these people, these brokers are the expert on this paperwork, dealings, and customs, uh, Bureau of Customs dealings and everything, all right? So that's one good tip. Another tip would be ask for videos for photos, tons of them, if you will finally decide to import those. All right? Being the buyer, you are, you are actually in the right position, situation, to ask for and to ask and demand for photos and videos. Current, current, current current photos and current videos because it's your right you're paying for a a dog and it's but natural that you know the current situation condition of the dog that you're buying if these sellers these breeders outside your country are even hesitating to send you updates to send you photos which nowadays is so easy they don't need a camera they just need their smartphone to take photos and videos if i may suggest let them take a video using their phone camera in the cage and let it go outside the cage and let it run look for the natural more natural situation don't let them just stack don't let them just stack the dogs and take videos let it move look for flaws look for if your dog can't properly walk and you didn't see it in the video and then it arrives in your country and it's crippled then that's your fault, all right? It is also your obligation in yourself, to yourself, to ask for proof of good condition, of um, good situation of that certain dog. If it's healthy, then if it's moving normally, then this seller will not hesitate to send you a lot of videos and photos because it's so easy to do it 
So, just do it. Ask for it. Demand. Once they hesitate, cut the transaction. There's something wrong. Move on to the next seller. Alright? But here's the thing. Be respectful. Yes, you're the buyer. Yes, you're gonna pay for it. But be respectful. There are breeders outside the country that have day jobs. And they can just uh, right away shoot videos or photos if you ask them to. There are breeders outside the country that have families. Um, a lot of them. Um, and only a few of them would probably have 24 hours access to their, to their dogs. And also consider the time difference. If I'm gonna ask, it's uh, it's 3.25 it's p.m. here in the Philippines right now. If I ask an update, from a seller in California, he may not be able to give me because it's night time already. All right, so you should be respectful. You should be considerate to the sellers. But then again, if all they offer you are alibis, excuses, and it's been so long since the last update, then if you're not comfortable, cut the transaction besides you haven't paid yet it is your right all right for filipino buyers of dogs from overseas i, I just said be respectful be considerate one way to be being respectful is that try to uh, be classy on haggling with prices I have talked to sellers from over overseas that they're, and they told me that certain people from here are asking way too much. Like every month, a payment of $250. When would you finish paying the dog then? Right? It would take so long for you to finish if he, if he or she even agrees to sell you that dog that way. Be considerate. You're not buying. It is not appliance that you're buying. All right? That you can do installment unless the breeder or the seller voluntarily offers that um, condition or that way of payment or mode of payment so be respectful guys put everything in black and white you know what i mean right put everything in writing but here's the thing i'm also in the know that putting everything in black and white or in writing is not really a common practice I would say here in the Philippines or I would say in general. Why? Because uh, maybe this is a gentleman's game all along, right? Uh, words are easily trusted. Um, names are easily trusted. Popular names are easily trusted. But there have been ugly fights all over the internet due to unclear agreement. So this is my tip. One, if you can do it, put it in writing. All right? Even for stud, they, they do it in writing. Stud rights or stud contracts, right? If you can do it, do it that way all the time. All right? That's my priority. Second is, if, if you're not comfortable putting it in writing, make sure you don't do the links over the phone exclusively. Why? Unless you got a recorder and you can make use of that eventually if they screw you up. But make sure, yes, you do phone calls maybe, um, video calls, but when you don't do it in writing, as much as possible, when you have paid and when you have 
uh, you have receipt, receipts on your hand, send photos through messengers, through WhatsApp, through Viber, through email. Why? Because you can screenshot those evidences. Protect yourself. Alright? You can easily trust people in your barangays here in the Philippines. Imagine not all people in your barangay you can trust, right? You can trust every people in your barangay. Imagine the whole world. Alright? Not because they got beautiful and badass dogs that they're trustworthy already. Be mindful of that. Put everything in writing if you can or have screenshots of every agreement and before consummating this agreement, everything needs to be like itemized or everything needs to be clear between you and the seller. It pays to be diligent. It pays to be proactive, my friends. After listening to my tips and pointers on importing dogs, no matter what breed that is, um, if you have taken them by heart, I think soon enough you'll be ready to import dogs. Importing dogs is fun. Importing dogs is crucial. It is very important in one country because we all want to improve the quality of dogs that we have in our country. But it is also heartbreaking if you fail, if you get screwed up, if you get a dog that you're not very happy about, all right? I am very sad to see people getting so disappointed just a week after importing dogs because they don't like what they bought. But I'm more sad because it's their fault. So these tips and pointers that I have offered you will make sure not 100%, but at least it will help you better decide on what to import, when to import, and how to import. My friends, I hope this video again helps you. Um, please don't hesitate to comment and share this video. I would love for you to consider subscribing to my channel. Alright, have a great day everyone.